We're going a bit stir crazy. Oh, boy. Been three weeks on the same stretch of canal. <laughs> Didn't quite know how it was going to affect us, and it's not good. No. <laughs> but uh, we've been into Chester again, and we brought the boat back out yesterday. I think um, we've done this stretch four times no. now, haven't we? We're going past the same boats and getting to know all the local dog walkers. <laughs> yeah, you know when you've been somewhere too long, when the local people get to know your dog's names. <laughs> Well, we've rode through the two storms that we've had. First one was worse than the second, we think. Uh, we actually got blown off our moorings on the morning of my birthday. As I'm wandering around with my coffee in my pyjamas, being looked after, suddenly saw that the towpath was disappearing out of sight. <laughs> and we had to run out in our pyjamas in the rain and grab hold of ropes. And my hero pulled us back in, didn't yes, you? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so, um... Had a nice, another nice couple of days in Chester. Dogs don't like it in the city though, as you know. Oh, no. Especially Archie, he gets really stressed and frustrated. As soon as you let them off the boat, he just barks and, yeah. and goes mad, doesn't he? He does. And uh, it's just, yeah, he just gets, I think it's just frustration because he can't go running. Um, he's not like it when you're in the countryside, it's fine. But anyway, he's happy, we're happy. Now we're back out in the sticks. More or less, we're just a couple of miles outside Chester, or a few miles, and uh, we've both had the lurgy this last week. It's funny, and, that happens uh, every time we've been in town as well. <laughs> yeah. so we're just recovering. I think you're in the middle of it, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah. And uh, we're going for a little walk in a village called Crystleton, um, just to blow the cobwebs. It's supposed to be a really pretty little village. I popped up there the other day for something, but Rich hasn't seen it, so we're just going to go and have a little wander around. Right, catch you later. graveyard there at the church there's a gravestone of a lady who died in 1816 at the grand old age of 108 which is probably double the expected yeah. um, lifespan in those days I guess yeah so there's hope for you yet friend and we've discovered a really good quick recipe recently that we've used lots of times this isn't a cooking channel we're not going to do big recipes but this one's worth sharing so I've fried up a mixture of vegetables you can use anything we've got courgettes onions garlic pepper carrot I've made it with mushrooms and cauliflower put spinach anything just fry some vegetables up and then you need gram flour which is chickpea flour and we're going to have a cup of chickpea flour three quarters of a cup of water obviously whatever quantities you want um, bigger mugs or bowls if you're making lots like all our cooking it's very pour it out and shove it in nothing is weighed and measured and couple of teaspoons of turmeric which as we've said before is like the super duper spice at the moment it's supposed to be good for everything health giving properties so as we've both had colds put a bit extra 
extra in. Um, I'm also going to add these are our own chilies that we grew and then dried, hung up over the stove and dried. And I'm just going to chop those up roughly because I think the spice will be good for us. There's some garlic in there. I don't think we'll put any salt and pepper in. You just put whatever you like. Be creative. This needs a good whisk. So that you've got a nice battery if you've got a proper whisk electric whisk you can do that as you know we don't really use anything electric on this boat so <laughs> it's a good old hand just try and get rid of your lumps i might add that looks a little bit thick to me it just needs to be a sort of fairly stiff butter so i'm going to add a little bit more water Then tip your vegetables. I guess if you want to use raw vegetables, you just even put raw vegetables in there. It doesn't have to be fried up and cooked, depending on what you're using. I think raw raw cauliflower and raw carrot and stuff would be really good. Look at the colours. And then we're just going to fry little piles of that. I don't think we've actually said what it is you're making. <laughs> well, I don't know what they're called. I suppose fritters, pancakes. pancakes yeah. I don't know what you would call them. Um, I suppose in India they would be pakora. But because you're going to put, you know, whatever vegetables you want into there, I don't know that there's going to be a proper name for them. I'm just going to get the oil warmed up. And then you just have spoonfuls of this put into the oil and they cook in about two minutes turn them over and they just make little pancake things and they're delicious so as soon as they started to set which is about a minute and a half two minutes just turn them chunkier vegetables obviously you get more of texture I think we did one with potato and spinach and leek once and they were quite chunky and lumpy but just play be expressive with your cooking <laughs> oh look gorgeous they smell great and we would just have those with some tomato sauce or something on the side in the summer they'll be great with a salad but obviously we haven't got any at the moment. So. Dead chuffed. We've been looking for a macrame basket and a plant for ages to hang up here and fill this gap. And when we were in Chester Market, we saw some for sale and actually got chatting to the, the girl who served us. And she makes these herself, hands knots them. This is the medium one. Her name is Mia. And uh, she's just started out her own little business on Etsy. And we don't normally give plugs, but we thought we'd show you this. I was so chuffed with it. And such a lovely little girl. We'll put the link to her Etsy account and to her Instagram account underneath the video. So hopefully now this is gonna grow all the way down and cover up all the things we don't want anybody to see plant also came from Chester Market and Chester Market is an absolute must if anybody is anywhere near the area it's such a fantastic market fantastic plant stall uh, green grocery butchery a whole cheese stall but the great thing about it as well is there's loads of little places to eat with tables and chairs outside and bars there were some places selling real ale and a lovely little wine bar and we actually stopped at about three o'clock in the afternoon and just supped on a bottle of wine because we could. Um, lovely, lovely place. I thoroughly recommend it. They stay open till 10 o'clock at night on Fridays and Saturdays. But thank you, Mia, for this. Um, it's 
just the job and in fact I think I might be ordering some more because I'm getting a little bit of the bug now but there you are <coughs> take five yes we've sorted out our <laughs> Wi-Fi on board we've gone with uh, the phone provider three and we're getting all we can eat unlimited data for almost half the price we were paying for a hundred gigabytes before and I guess uh, I think it takes three gigabytes to watch a football game or something like that so it just goes to show how much you actually get through in the course of a month and uploading videos takes a lot of the data as well so we've got a new gadget thing and we've been using it for the best part of a week and uh, it's proven to be okay at the moment and Fran's phone is actually on three and we don't have any signal issues with your phone do we? It's been really good I've been on there for about three months it's been really good but this little I don't know what you dongle whatever you call yeah, it we can actually have it charging in the engine room and still receiving signal at this end of the boat yeah. it seems to be so good. Yeah it's with the previous one you couldn't take it out of this room uh, and, and receive a signal so yeah it's pretty good we're really pleased. So this little video is basically just to let you know where we are uh, and well really where we're going and um, we've changed our minds yet again. You want your coffee on? Thank you. And um, we've decided that we're not going to go up the Langothlan Canal this spring uh, but we decided to head back over to the Peak Forest in Derbyshire. Yeah, it's, it's going down the Shropshire Union um, and onto Langothlan which is what we would have had to have done. We've got four weeks before we can get onto Langothlan and it's uh, not long enough to go up and down that little bit of canal again. We're going to be chasing our tails and we want to get moving a little bit. And we loved Peak Forest, didn't we? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It'll be completely different this time of year to in the autumn. We were picking blackberries last time we were there. We might be making older flower champagne this time. We'll see. But that's what we're going to do, isn't it? It is. Um... Another thing that's going to happen between now and then, hopefully, touch wood, is that somebody's going to come on board and check our electrics out. Yeah, we've been really running short of power a few days and we're not happy. There's a few things, wires and cables, that we're not quite sure where they're going to. So we want to get that checked out and I think we're going to need new batteries. Oh, without a doubt. We've without got a to shadow spend a doubt. little bit of money, no doubt, on it, but mm. it needs to be done. So. That's that, all that's good that stuff. One. That is good stuff. So the Peak Forest, we'll be exploring new villages, exploring new towns. We're going to catch the train maybe and go into places like Buxton. Yes. And do yes. a lot of uh, exploring the Derbyshire towns that we really love. It's a gorgeous place, gorgeous uh, area. And we're not even going to start thinking about what's after that no. because there's about <laughs> six weeks in which we can change our minds so many times. So... <coughs> That, that's it. As far as we know, that's what's happening. That's, yeah. <laughs> Watch this space. Yeah.